Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is early. I don't know how early it is. Hold on, I'll tell you in just a second. I'm leaving the mire. It is six, well, it's not too early, it's 6.46. I mean, it's early for the vlog, but it's not early for me. It is 6.46, and I am headed home from Meyer. Somebody just texted me, hold on a second. Um, I think I'm not getting Chinese food tonight. Alex doesn't get off until 8. He already ate Chipotle. He said he's not hungry. So I'm thinking about getting some vegetable fried rice and um, vegetable rolls, spring rolls. I'm going to go home. I'm going to film a Peterisms video. I slept so late today because I got home last night. I listened to my audiobook for a little bit. And then I got home last night and I could not fall asleep. So I watched Big Brother from, was it uh, Tuesday night, I think? And then um, I was gonna watch The Alienist, but it's two hours long. Okay, so The Alienist, when you watch it, is like, if you watch it, if you've watched, like I said, it's the third time in a row to say this. If you've watched it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's very, very, like, well, it's dark, like, in theme. But it's dark to watch, too, because it mostly takes place at night. So, if you're watching it during the daytime, like, outside, it's, where is my lip balm? Oh, here it is. It's really hard to see on, like, my iPad. So, um, I can't watch it when it's, like, light outside. I have to watch it at night and the sun was coming up, that's how late it was. So I was like, screw it, I'm gonna watch something else. I mean, it wasn't, it, the sun wasn't coming up that much. It was like five o'clock. And so I, so many people had told me about, cause they know that I'm like, people know that I'm really interested in the ballroom scene in, in New York City. Um, like the subculture of the ballroom scene that was like showed in Paris is burning and still exists in New York City. So people had told me that there was this show on HBO Max called um, Legendary. So I started watching it and I had no idea what it was. I thought it was just gonna be like a TV series like Pose or something and then somebody said it was like a documentary so I was, I was like started watching it. I was like is this, I, I saw that when I looked it said like cast or like people that were on it and it said that Jamil Jamil, who I, I think that's how you pronounce her name. I love her. She was in The Good Place. And so I um, was like, well, is this like a TV show? Like, what is it? And it also showed like, um, I, I don't know her name. She's gorgeous. I love her. The woman that plays um, in Pose, she was like... Um, if you've watched it, she's the one that's like, I don't want to give too much away if you haven't watched it because everybody should watch Pose. It's such a fantastic show. Um, and the cast has done, it is just really full of LGBTQIA plus um, cast members. But anyway, and she's in it. So I was like, all these people are in it. There's like this hip hop star and all this stuff. And I was like, so is it like a real show or whatever? And I started watching it. It's a reality show with eight different houses from the ballroom scene in New York City, and they're competing for like, to be the legendary house. And it is so good, you guys. Like, I am obsessed with it. I was like, yes, 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 yes. It reminded me of back in the day, like, um, Indianapolis, when I came out, when I was 18 years old, was really kind of like a central town for drag. Um, right before I had come out, we had a club here in Indianapolis called the 21 Club. And the 21 Club had hosted, um, I think, Miss Gay America. And so we had a lot of national title holders here in Indiana. Um, I think Gina Jones was a, a national title holder. I think she was like a Miss... Uh, we have like a Miss, I think she was like a Miss Gay USA at large. Um, yeah, I think she was a Miss Gay USA at large. And then we had um, later, uh, what is her name? Why can't I remember? But she was a Miss Continental Plus. 
But we had, like, a lot of people that, like, um, a Jamie Hunter-like place at Miss Gay America. She was, like, in the top five. Um, we had a lot of, like, like, Indianapolis was, like, a big drag hub. And Louisville, Kentucky, which was, you know, two, two hours south of us, was a big drag city, too, because of the, um, they had Entertainer of the Year, National Entertainer of the Year, they still do, which is, um, a national pageant. And so, like, Indianapolis and Louisville were big, like, drag pageant cities. And so every, like, the whole drag, like, the whole gay culture in Indianapolis was about going to drag shows. Now, drag shows are not necessarily, they're not ball culture. But at that time in Indianapolis, there was, like, a real subculture kind of of drag in Indianapolis. And it, it feels very similar to me of when I watch, like, Paris is Burning or Pose. Like, that was kind of the culture of drag in Indianapolis. Um, it was very much like family. Like, when I came out, um, there were four drag queens that I was friends with that all lived together in one house. And, like, everybody would go over there on Sunday for, you know, chili dinners and things like that. They would host, like, these chili dinners, and everybody would go over there and do things that we shouldn't have been doing, like, drink and smoke weed. And then they would get ready, and then they had a show on Sunday night that they would do, you know? And every bar in Indianapolis had shows, so it was, like, it was not hard to get bookings. I mean, there was, like, the Metro, and there was, like, um, Cab Club Cabaret, and there was, like, Talbot Street later, and then there was, like, NYC. Well, they didn't have, it didn't have shows. Um... But there was like, oh, um, the 10, which was a lesbian bar, which was so much fun. Um, they had shows. They had like really great shows there and they had pageants there and stuff and we had local pageants. And so it was like everything that you did when you would go out was about drag. Like, I mean, I don't remember ever going out when we didn't go see a show, like, we would start the night watching a show, you know, and then, like, in Wednesday nights, Thursday nights, Friday nights, Saturday nights, Sunday nights, I mean, Wednesday night on, there were shows in Indianapolis, and so, um, and I was friends with all of the drag queens, and, like, we were all friends with, you know, that, they were, like, like, in Indianapolis, they were kind of, like, the celebrities of the gay scene, um, I don't know really what happened to the gay scene in Indianapolis. Like, it kind of died slowly over time. Like, there's really only a couple bars left, and, um, I haven't been to a gay bar in Indianapolis. I don't really remember the last time that I went. Um, and, I mean, it's been years. Alex goes sometimes to this bar downtown called Teenies. Um, and they have, like, a little dance bar. I, he likes it, but he doesn't go very often. And then the Metro is still open. Um, I don't know, like, and then there's a drag bar that's, like, south of that that's still open. But Talbot Street, which was, like, this huge club, it closed. And, um, there was a lot of rumors that there was going to be another gay bar that opened. I actually think that, a, a, like, a gay club in Indy, well, I mean, not right now in the middle of COVID, but I actually think that, like, a big gay club in Indianapolis would do very well if it was kind of like a mixed gay club, you know, like the connection was in Louisville. The connection when I started going to it in Louisville, Kentucky was so fun. It was like, it was like six bars in one. And when you would walk in, there was actually like an outside area when I first started going there that like you would walk in and there was like, they had a restaurant, which is where like this main bar, it's, it doesn't even exist anymore. But there was like this beautiful bar when you would walk in where you got like, you know, carded and, um, then there was a restaurant in there as well, like a really nice restaurant. And then you would walk through into like the dance floor. And then like outside of the dance floor, there was like outside area that they ended up covering up. And, um, it was, um, and then you walked into like the drag bar and they actually had like a huge drag bar that, I don't know if they had, like, the go-go dancing area back then. I think they added that later because they, like, upscaled the bar and, like, it made it really, really... I mean, it was always nice, but they made it very, very nice. It was such a fun club to come to because it was, like, huge. Like, the dance floor could have, like, three or four hundred people on it, you know? Um, maybe not that much. Two, two, three... I mean, it was big. And then there was, like, this area that you could, like, sit and stand and watch over the bar. 
and the drag bar was like you went in and it was actually like um, a theater like you like it had like theater seating like with tables that you would sit at these tables and it was like you know tiered down and then there was like a huge stage with you know like a curtain and things like that it was very very cool and a huge bar that was in the back and then it, like upper seating that like you had to go upstairs to like kind of look down onto the stage um and we went down there a lot from Indianapolis, especially because like a lot of our friends would do shows. And uh, at the time, there was a connection in Louisville. It was called the Connection Nightclub. There was a Connection Nightclub in Louisville, and there was a Connection Nightclub in um, what do you call it? In um, Nashville, Tennessee, too. So like, I had a friend of mine, and she used to perform it at um, Louisville and Nashville. And I think she still. I think she lives in Nashville. There's a play in Nashville. I think she works there from time to time. I don't really know where she works anymore, to be honest with you. Because, um, like I said, just like over time. Well, Talbot Street closed, so that was where I actually met Alex for the very first time. I saw him, and um, I was with a friend of mine. And she and I were there for a drag show on like a Sunday night. And um, it kind of like died over time. People stopped going out. Uh, Indianapolis is kind of like a weird LGBTQIA plus city. Like the LGBT community here in Indianapolis is very like suburban, professional, settled down. Like the people that like, the gay guys that I've known that like wanted to keep on partying or wanted like a bigger life, like they all moved to Chicago. Like the majority of them live in Chicago and then they moved to like New York or LA after that. Um, you know, or around the US, but like, all like for the like all the guys that I know that are like let's say ten years older than me and ten years younger than me that like that were collectively like we all went out together like everybody has settled down like I don't know anybody that would be like yeah let's go and get like real wild you know what I mean like everybody settled down like it's a city <clears throat> Indianapolis is a city to settle down in you know and even like the downtown scene is very subdued it's very loungy the bars are very loungy um, like our it's just there's not a whole lot to do you know there's like really great restaurants and walking around and there's like nice art galleries and stuff like that but it's a city to settle down in um so yeah like i think the city just kind of like the gay scene just kind of died over time and like what happened was well the 10 the lesbian bar closed down and then they started hosting a lot of lesbian nights over at the metro um and then uh, Talbot Street closed down, which was like where everybody would go. And um, the majority of people would go, oh, there's another gay bar here in town that's been open forever. And it's called, uh, I think it's called Greg's now, but it was called Our Place back in the day. That's actually where her Baumeister, the serial killer, would go and find guys. Was that our, we used to call it OPs back in the day. It was like Our Place, you know, so we would call it our OPs. Um, and it's just like a very, like they would call it like a Levi bar. I mean, you just like go there and like, you know, jeans and a t-shirt. It's very laid back. Um, and then like when you walk in, there's like pool tables and there's like, they redid it. <clears throat> but it's very kind of like woodsy. Um, I mean, it's like nothing to look at kind of bar. I mean, it's not a bad bar, but it's like nothing to look at. It's really just kind of standing around talking to your friends. There's like a patio where people sit outside and, you know, like talk and smoke cigarettes and whatever. I don't know if they even do anymore. I haven't been there in forever. There's some pool tables and then there's like a dance floor that's like real dark and there's a bar in there and they used to have country line dancing like on Friday nights and that would stop at midnight and then they would play like other stuff, but... Yeah, back in the day when I was going out, Indianapolis was a fun city to go out in. I mean, it was like, there was so much to do, and it just was, I mean, it was just really, really fun. And, um, yeah, it's, I don't even know, like, if it was still like that, that I would really want to go out. You know what I mean? You know, when Alex and I started dating, we went to... Like, I would say, like, our first two years, we went to all, like, gay bars. <clears throat> and, um, I mean, every once in a while we would go to, like, to a straight club or a bar or whatever like that. I mean, it wasn't like we were opposed to it. But, like, maybe our first year and a half. Because then we started going, we started making friends. And it was because really because of the website. We started making friends with a lot of people that were, like, bar owners and, um 
and they're like their wives and we just became kind of like part of that whole scene and so we started like exclusively just going out like on a like on a Friday or Saturday night I mean we would maybe go to like Talbot Street the gay bar for like an hour or half an hour just to like see some of our friends and whatever but then we would always go over to like downtown Indianapolis where all like the straight bars are and that's what we would do you know or we would go out to dinner first with like some friends of ours and then we would go out to the clubs it was fun you know we did that for a couple years but like those friends all like settled down and had kids and got married and you know and the thing is, is that the majority of those people that we were friends with like now like we'll all meet up at like ultra or we'll go to Las Vegas like six couples you know or something like that or when we're in Las Vegas like other couples that we're friends with are there you know that we'll like meet up and see um, or all stay at the same hotel and stuff like that it's like so everybody's kind of like settled down but like we'll all be like okay let's go to Las Vegas at the same time you know um, but we can't do that right now obviously so but anyway this um this show, Legendary, is really, really good. It's very fun. And, um, I mean, back in the day, you know, like, when we would watch drag shows, I mean, they busted it out, these, like, local queens. I mean, you would talk about, they would call it bucking back in the day when they would, like, do this kind of stuff, you know? And the high kicks and, you know, we'll talk about de these death drops that you see today. I mean, girls were doing that back in the day, left and right, you know? and somersaults I mean they dancing like you either did ballads or you danced right like with drag and um especially like when we would go to drag pageants because all the queens that we were friends with or any other you know queens would have like backup dancers like 10 backup dancers and stuff and they would have these huge productions and um you know so we would be out there be like yes 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 it was so much fun so much fun so anyway, um, that's kind of what the show is a little bit about. I really enjoy it. I really enjoyed it watching it last night. But it's like ten. It's like nine or ten episodes, and um, I only finished the first episode, so I want to watch some of that tonight. And then um, I filmed this video yesterday. This like it's not. I mean, it's not getting any views, but it's whatever. Um, I did this video yesterday called like the most unpopular opinion, and it was basically just like a Q and A. And, um, so I scheduled it to be posted today at noon, and, um, so that it would, like, when I got up, because I was like, and then when I woke up today, I was like, I think I'm just going to do that in a review video, and then a Peterisms video, which is still a lot of videos. God, my Peterisms videos are getting, like, you guys, they're getting, like, a thousand views a video, which is, like, crazy. Like, that, th that channel never used to get like very many views but I just loved doing the meditations over there but it's getting it's getting a lot of views I just realized I had been like driving around doing stuff and I looked at the clock and it's like 7 o'clock and I need to go home and feed the dogs I was like oh my god I have to go home and feed the dogs um but yeah like that channel never like used to get a lot of views and now it's getting a lot of views and I love doing the Peterisms channel because it's very similar to what I talk about over here you know like I'll read a meditation and um you know, it's something that I would have talked about, like, just with, like, my friends in sobriety. And I love doing it. Um, so, yeah. I wanted to vlog early tonight <clears throat> because I don't want to go to sleep and get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I want to stay up and watch these shows. And I want to listen to a little bit of my audiobook. So, I was like, I'm going to get my vlog done a little bit earlier tonight. Um... I've got to come up here and now I've got to turn around, find somewhere to turn around in the middle of all this traffic so I can go back the other way. But I was like, um, I'm going to get my vlog done a little bit early tonight so that I can um, watch these shows. I have to finish The Alienist. And then Tanya was telling me about a show, what was it called? Um, shoot, she just told me about it. She was like, you, I think you would like this. She and Eric go through shows, like, nonstop. Like, they're like, they're like Alex. Like, they just, like, boom, go through a show. What was it called? It was one word. And I heard somebody else talk about it recently. It starts with, a, I think it starts with an E. It's like Equation or something like that. I want to say Erasure, like the band. Do you remember the band Erasure back in the day? Whatever happened to some of these bands, I wonder. Um, like, Depeche Mode. And erasure. I used to love them back in the day. Anyway, I don't remember what the, the TV show was that she was watching, but 
Alex just finished Younger. He loved it. He thought it was fantastic. But I want to finish the show and I want to start watching the other shows because I know that um, Wentworth is going to be coming out soon. And then um, I, I'm going to try to find the final season of The Good Place. I don't, like people are telling me I can find it here and I can find it there, but I can't find it anywhere to watch. It's like all, the whole season isn't on Hulu. It's like four episodes. So I don't know how to like go in. I would buy it because it doesn't come out until November and I want to watch the end of it. I want to watch the last season season because I really liked The Good Place and that was with that Jamil Jamil uh, Jamil she's gorgeous I love her um, I think she just came out as bisexual I think I read that in an article somewhere so I got up today and um, just did a bunch of stuff around the house and then I was actually on my favorite murder podcast um, website shopping, but I didn't buy anything because everything I wanted, they um, didn't have. It was like they didn't have it in my size. Caroline and I were going to get Murderino t-shirts. So they say my favorite murder like on the front and then on the side. Oh, by the way, oh my God, I'm so excited. So I've been working with somebody to come up with like logos for um, new merch and so I asked her, I said, could you come up with something for the True Crime Book Club too? And so she's going to do that as well. And so she sent me a couple designs and I sent them to Mel and I asked Mel what she thought. She's like, I'm just going to let Mel be in control of it. And Mel was like, well, I really like this one, but I don't like the font. So I sent it back to her. So she's going to, I think she's going to work on that. I'm really excited about it because I'm like really close to releasing new merch. Um, and I'm excited for people to go see that. So, um... Yeah, so anyway, but I wanted this shirt, like they have them in short sleeve and long sleeve, and it says like, um, my favorite murderer, and then it says Murderino down the side. I didn't realize, I thought Murderino was like just a name used for my favorite murderer, but apparently a Murderino is anybody that's in, interested in true crime. I was not aware of that. <laughs> um, so anyway, because this is how I found out, because then I got online, because I was like, I want some true crime coffee mugs. Like that is what I want. I want like... Not necessarily these because, you know, you, like these are Starbucks obviously, but you know like the ones that are shorter that like you can put your own coffee in at home so I can make my own coffee in a Keurig and take it with me. You know, like the the hot and cold cups, you know I'm talking about, that have like the thing on the top that you can slide and whatever. So I was looking online and there are so many true crime mugs and I was like, oh my God, I'm obsessed, right? So, I didn't order any. I was just looking at them. But there were a lot of them that was like, I'm a murderino. And it was like, murderino. And then, like, somebody had one that was like, murderino definition. And then it was like, on this coffee mug. And it was like, somebody obsessed with true crime that only listens to true crime. That only reads true crime. That only watches true crime shows. So, I was like, oh, is a murderino not just somebody that watches my favorite or listen to my favorite murder podcast is it somebody that like just loves true I guess it's just like an overall term I didn't realize that I'd only heard it in relation to my favorite murder so um Caroline said she listens to all of their podcasts like I'm so far behind I need to start listening to them again I listen to them from time to time I'm not a big podcast person are you guys podcast people you're probably like yes Peter that's why we listen to you because you're like a podcast I'm just not a big podcast person it's so strange um I don't know what it is. I'm just... I don't know. Like, I'm not, like, super into, like, listening to podcasts. Like, when I listen to them, I really enjoy them. Um, but I'm not super into them. I'll tell you what I'm really into, and I talked about this the other night, and I actually ended up listening to my audiobook. I did not listen to one, but is that I'm really into 12-step store leads. They're called leads. Um, when somebody, like, tells their story or whatever. I want to show something, first of all, okay? So, um, I want to thank some people on here. Oh, I have a... Hold on a second. Turning around. Who texted me? Let's see. Um, okay, so I just want to say thank you to MJ and her boyfriend for sending me this postcard that says no drama. It was very, very sweet. Thank you so much. And then I also got, I have stuff behind me too, you guys, that I haven't opened yet. Um, 
yeah, I have stuff behind me that I got from the post office that I haven't opened yet, so I'll show that. But I want to thank, thank Bath for the very beautiful card. Um, and she sent me a really nice, uh, she wrote inside of it and everything like that. But here's the card. So thank you, Beth, for that. I, I think it's Beth. I'm almost positive. Yes, Beth. Thank you so much. And then to the two Laurens, I don't think they watch this channel. Okay, these two girls that are friends watch my channel. They watch my Peterism's channel, they said. And they sent me all of these zines that they do. You guys, okay, I'm like obsessed. I love this card. It says, everything you've already accomplished is a mountain someone else is currently trying to climb. Maybe you can give them a leg up. Is that not so cool? I love that. And, um... Stay calm, breathe deep, drink water, it's okay, keep going. And then they wrote me, both of them wrote me in this card, like really nice letters. And so they've made these zines, and they're like, do you know what a zine is? I'm like, yeah, my friends and I were obsessed with zines when we were in high school because like a lot of like punk rock kids like made zines. So each zine that they have in here is like, um, it's, I don't want to, they're, they're private, so I don't know if they want anybody to show them but you guys they're like fantastic they're like typewritten and then they have like pictures in them and content warnings and it's just you guys it is so cool um and they gave me like here i'm gonna show you one of them has a post-it note on it i don't if they want me to show them i'll show them but they gave me like five of them to read um and they like put stickers like cute stickers all over the envelope and then they made me this like little zine like this okay so they sent it to me to read because they thought like while well, I was just sitting around because my you know leg was hurting I sat in okay this one that she sent me has like a personal note on it because it's about a, like a personal story so anyway she sent me this one I sat like in the Meyer parking lot and I was just like enthralled reading this I loved this this is what I'm talking about about be too much and like live your truth and do what makes you happy like I'm obsessed with these like I want to talk to these because she's like you should make your own zine and I'm like I should make my own zine what would I make a zine about so I don't know but I was like obsessed with that when I saw them I was like this is the cutest idea I love this but they're like I have to say I don't know if they want me to talk about what they're about, so I won't say. But they're about some, like, deep stuff. Um, they're not, like... Well, one of them's kind of funny, but they're not about, like... They're, like, stories about their life, and they put them in this, like, magazine form that's, like, typewritten articles with, like, handwritten poems and all kinds of stuff. But they're, like, about, like, deep issues. You know what I mean? And, um, I love them. I'm just, like, oh, my God. Like, this is so cool. This is the coolest thing. The reason I don't want to show the stuff that I got from the post office in the back is because I haven't opened it, first of all. Second of all, um, I get a lot of things to my post office that are sent to be reviewed and I kind of like sometimes I don't get it right away if that makes sense like there's no card or anything in there and I'm like did somebody send this to me to review or what um and then the other thing is I took it out like I opened I like just ripped it back to see what it was but I didn't read the letter inside of it and I took it inside um um and then one of my friends actually sent me um a professional tens unit which is like the thing that you use like on your back that I was told to use you know to like help with the nerves like it really really did work I'm kind of I don't I'm unsure of using it right now because like as my like back is like it feels like it's healing a little bit I don't want to like aggravate it and make it worse you know what I mean so yeah Alex has a bunch of work he has to do I texted him I was like do you want any Chinese food and he was like no because I'm going to go home and I'm going to upload my review video. I rep, uh, I reviewed the Harry Potter Poly Juice Potion Frappuccino today. It was real cute. Um, but I texted Alex and I said, I think I'm going to go get Chinese. Do you want anything? And he was like, no, I'm good. I ate Chipotle and I'm full. And it was yummy. I think he just said he was, it was good. And I said, okay. And I said, do you have any plans tonight? And he said, no, I'm just going to come home. And he has a bunch of stuff he has to work on, like work at home. So I was like, well, I'll get my vlog done. And then I will... Um, maybe like take an early nap and because when he says he'll have to do some work at home that means he's going to sit on the computer for the next four hours because <laughs> he does a lot of like um editing photos and stuff like that for people so that's like a big part of like what he does and so he'll be like editing and editing and editing and um so anyway 
And he enjoys that. He loves that. I don't know what to get him for our anniversary because he's going to Chicago with Sarah. Um, they're going up there to see a bunch of their friends from college that live up there. And they're just going there for the day and then they're driving back. Um, and I don't know what to get him. And... Like, he already told me what he's getting me. And so I'm like, okay. Like, so I told him he's going to Zara while he's up there because he loves that store Zara. So I said, it stopped. I cannot believe I've already vlogged for half an hour already. But anyway, um, I said I was going to get you a gift card for Zara because um, you were going to Chicago. And I thought that way you could have fun and, like, you know, buying some stuff from Zara. And he, he was just like, oh, okay. Like, he didn't seem excited about it at all. So I was like well, what do you want? Because eight year traditional is bronze. <laughs> so what would be a bronze gift that you would like? Alex and I actually, when we first, like our first couple years married, like we were real serious about that stuff. Like we did it like by the, you know, you're supposed to, how you're supposed to do it. Like wood and all that kind of stuff. Um, I can't remember the ones, but um, I remember like the things that we like got each other. It was kind of fun to do that. I love celebrating our anniversary. I really wish that we, you know, every year we go to Las Vegas. I really wish that we could go to Las Vegas. Um, but it's just, you know, we need to just stay at home and be safe and healthy. And, um, you know, we've talked to so many people and I really thought a lot about what people had said on here and things like that, you know, and we just decided that like, you know, this is no time to travel. And we both agree with that. And, um, you know, we were talking about, like, Ultra the other night, like, Melissa and Jason and Alex and I, and we're like, I don't, we don't even think Ultra 21 is going to happen. Like, I mean, we're, like, six months out from, like, Ultra in Miami. Like, right? Like, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. Yeah, seven months. I mean, like, how is it possible in seven months that we're going to be completely back to normal? Like, I just don't see that happening. And I actually almost kind of, like, I wonder if this is just not, like, going to be our new normal. Like, this is just going to be how things are. And if that's the case, then, like, you wonder. Because I think at some point people are going to have a breaking point. Um, you know, like, I mean, if we're, like, we've all been at home and done what we're supposed to do and not traveled or whatever for, like, a year and a half or two years, I think people are going to start being like, okay, well, I'm going to travel and I'll just be as safe as I can possibly be, you know? Now, we talked to people in that live in Las Vegas and everybody was like, don't come. Everything's shutting down anyway. Um, and... Um, I have thought about doing the whole, like, Gatlinburg thing. Somebody in the comment section below said that they did that and they had a great time. And somebody else said that they went. And, um, I mean, like, I think, like, if you go down there and you're as safe as possible, it's the same thing as, like, being here and going to the grocery store and, you know, whatever, like, to some degree. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't really talked anymore about that. So that's just, that's just talk. <laughs> so when everybody's like, oh no, you can't, that's just talk. We're not like, no plans. I haven't even mentioned it to Alex yet that anybody said anything about Gatlinburg and we didn't talk about it at dinner the other night. It was just something that Melissa threw out and it was something that Tanya threw out. So we'll pro it probably will never happen and we'll never go past us just having talked about it the other day. But it would be fun to just go and do something. You know, it's like, the thing is, is like, Alex and I really connect when we're away because it's really hard for us to like turn off um, and like not, it's, it's just really hard for us to turn off, you know, when we're like not on like away and like on vacation. And so when we're at home, it's like, um, it's just hard, you know? I don't know if you're like a couple out there and you're similar to that, but like, if I'm at home, I'm, I'm gonna make videos because I love to make videos, right? Um, it's hard for me to get up and just be like, I'm not making videos today. Um, and you know, Alex, there's like a lot of things that he does with his work that he really enjoys doing. So if we're at home, he's gonna do those things, especially because like if we're at home, people will call him and be like, could you have this for me to by tomorrow? Like Alex has a lot of contractual stuff. So they'll call, I, even when we're on vacation, that happens, you know? And when I'm on vacation, I make videos, but it's easy for me to be like, okay, I'm gonna like, Alex is gonna go down to the pool and he's gonna get us a place at the pool and I'm gonna film videos and upload them. And then when I come up from the pool four hours later, post them, you know what I mean? Um, so, but like here, it's like the day becomes about that, you know, and it's hard. And I, 
I guess it's a blessing, you know, that Alex and I both have, you know, careers that we absolutely love. Um, and we do things that we absolutely love and feel passionate about. I mean, it could be worse, right? We could have, like, jobs that we hated. But it's hard at the same time because it's hard to turn that off. Um, is this, like... I'm going to cut through here because this is, like... There's road construction ahead. Here's the Aldi that I haven't been to yet that I need to go to. But we're doing a little staycation um, at the end of August. Alex is taking off like three days. So he's going to be off like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Um, so I'm excited about that. We're just going to watch movies and like we're going to like get up and go to the pool if it's nice and um, then get like a salad for lunch and bring it to the pool and eat it and then like take romantical naps in the afternoon. That guy looks so familiar to me. Um, in the afternoon and then um, this is so weird. I'm like, oh my God, what did this used to be? I'm like, this used to be my grocery store. Oh my God, my Marsh grocery store, which I used to love. They used to have these little like pinwheel things that had like hummus and stuff in them and I loved them and you could only get them at Marsh. They, they were like, they made them there and they don't have them anymore. I think they made them there or they made them somewhere. I don't know, I've never seen them anywhere else. I didn't even realize that was a speed bump right there because it was paved over and didn't look like a speed bump. Um, and then we're gonna like, you know, like a couple nights, like just stay at home and do like maybe like a picnic dinner, like on the patio with like candles and stuff and, um, you know, like watch a movie or something like that. And then we're gonna go out to dinner like a night or two. It'll be fun, I'm excited about it. It'll be just like time that we get to spend together. You know, we have so much fun, like, spending time with, like, our friends together with us, too. Like, one night we'll probably go out to dinner with Jason and Melissa, and one night we'll probably do something um, with Sarah or something like that. You know, it's, like, fun to do that stuff. I enjoy it. The night that Sarah came over and we got Carrie out, that was so much fun. I really, really had fun doing that. I don't do that as, as much as I wish I did, you know? Like, have people over to our house. Our house is, like, not big. It's pretty small. So, like, to do something, we, we do have to, like, utilize the patio or whatever because it's, like, hard, you know? And then, like, I'm really... I don't know if this would surprise anybody, but I'm really weird about, like, our place being super, super clean. Um, like, when people come over. Because I'm like, I don't want anybody over unless it's, like, super clean. You know what I mean? But it is what it is. It's so funny because I say that and then like his mom and Liliana and people come over and they're like, oh my God, your place is so clean. You guys always, do you even use your kitchen and your kitchen always looks so spotless. And I'm like, yeah, except for that big box back there. I have that box back there that in behind like when I vlog, I'll probably vlog later and show the stuff I got. But I have this huge box that has like all of this crap in it. It has like the dog boxes that I have to review. It's just like stuff that I bought that I want to like do in a review video or whatever is all in there. And I'm like, I need to go through there and start sorting stuff out so we can move that box into the basement or something because it's like a complete mess. I just like places to be spotless. I like candles lit. I like it to smell good. I like it to be dusted. You know, like I'm really into all of that. <laughs> I like to nest. I'm really into nesting. Anyway, I'm going to get off here now and go home and feed the doggies. The little pups, little pups. Arr, 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 arr. And Alex got them harnesses so he can take them on more walks. Um, he's really been missing pee, pee lately. So I'm going to get off here and I will be back later. Love you guys. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> you get to help me clean up the dinner tonight. I just uh, fed the dogs. And I am looking for the lid. Have you guys seen these lids? Oh my god, they're like perfection for dog food. You just put them on top and you can save them that way in the fridge. We got that one from the vet. Um, but Melissa just gave me those, so I'm very excited about that. Okay. Clean up the counter. Bear with me for just a second. Oh, man. Oh. You guys are going to do all the exciting stuff with me. Are you so excited? Clean off the fork. Clean off my cup from last night. 
These are Alex made a salads last night for dinner. These are like these huge salad bowls that he makes. See, we have two of them. Aren't they cool? Two plants. Here, I'm gonna turn this a little bit this way so you can see me. I have two plants beside the uh, each. Oh, this one's got a dead leaf on it. I didn't even see that because I'm gonna know. But I have these. <laughs> there's my thumbnail. I have these two plants next to the window to deal with that leaf there in a second. But they're like growing and doing really well. All right, so. Have you guys ever seen like one of these like medicine things? So this is what I use to put my medicine in. It's so sad because we used to put PP's medicine on this. So it says um, on the side of it, PP Mon. So it says right here, PP Mon. But anyway, this is where I put my medicine for my epilepsy. So I'm gonna, I've been meaning to organize this all day long, so we're gonna do that. And then I will show you the other stuff that I got in the mail. Tucker, did you eat your dinner already, sweetie? God, that was fast. <sighs> okay. I just got a letter in the mail that my MRI was covered by insurance, which is really great. Because I was worried about that, because I knew it was going to be expensive. Um, okay, I want to use here to show those. Whew, my leg is hurting to stand on. I kind of have to lean on something. Okay, I'm going to open it. Well, first of all, my friend sent me this medical quality TENS unit, so I'm very, very thankful about that. Okay, this is from, I can't see the name on the envelope. But I know what it is because I opened it and I'm very, very excited about it. This is unreal. Okay, so there's a letter. I'm going to open the letter. It's right here. Can't wait to show you what it is. Okay. It's from Melissa. Sweet Melissa. It looks like Melissa, actually. Um, dear Peter, I hope these DVDs cheer you up. I heard you mention that you love the love boat, makes you happy, so I've um, down, wish Boo Radley and Tucker and the three of you can get your minds off things. Take all the time you need to heal. Your good duties will be waiting for you when you're ready. All my love to you and Alex and Melissa. This, you guys, is so sweet. So I have like one season, I have like one disc or two discs of season one. You guys, this is unreal. Are you ready? Oh my God, the battery's about to die. I'm gonna show you this and I'll change the battery. She got me seasons one through three of Love Boat. And then look, she got me season four, volume one, and season four, volume two. I can't even believe it. I have like so many Love Boats. I can just put them in the TV upstairs because we don't have cable upstairs so I can watch it. Um, and then just, yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited about it. That was so sweet, Melissa. Thank you so much. I'm like, so, I love that. All right, let me um, change the battery and I will be right back. Okay, I'm hoping this battery is full. Do you guys see the box back there? That's the box I'm talking about that has Alex's black sweatshirt on it. Okay, then these are the crackers that I love, the toasted uh, chips with sour cream and onion. I got those, I got some Pringles for tonight. Yes, I'm eating so healthy, I know. Who's that? Somebody's texting me. Alex just sent me a picture of a bathroom that he wants because we're thinking about. Well, the whole thing is. It's on Instagram. Oh my God, that bathroom is incredible. Love that. Okay. Yeah, it's very cool. And it's actually something that we could do in our bathroom too. And it has a huge burn hanging in it and everything. I love that. Okay, so I opened all this. This is the zines. Okay, um, where? Oh, 
Hold on a second. Okay, so the next thing I got So, okay, it says these little goodies. So Rachel sent this to me, and she said, Hi, Peter, I'm sorry you've been in such pain recently. I hope these little goodies put a smile on your face. Take care from Rachel. Um, oh, she's the one that got me the goat. And then she got me this one, Wild Baby Plush Pal, heatable with soothing lavender scent. Oh, my God, I love it. Let's take it out and look at it. Oh, my God, I love that so much. How sweet is that? Heatable. Oh, so you like put it in the microwave. Oh, I get it. Because it's got like the seeds in it. Oh my God, that is so cool. I don't have my reading glasses on. Remove all packaging and tags and ensure the item is clean and dry before use. Place plush pad in the center of a clean microwave and heat for 20 seconds. Do not overheat. Read label on each plush pal to determine proper heating time. I love that. Cool cooling relief. Place plush plow or the comfort pack in a plastic bag and place in the freezer for at least one hour. Remove bag from the freezer and use the plush pad. Oh my God, I love that. Boo Radley, took her look. Boo Radley's down here too. They're just sniffing each other. That was so sweet. Thank you so much. Okay, and then the last thing that I got, hold on a second. Okay, so this is Christine and Christine sent me this book. Um, she said it helped her, and she hopes that I give it a chance, which I will, and it's called Pain Free, A Revolutionary Method for Stopping Chronic Pain, and she sent me this book, which was really, really sweet. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And, uh, and then I got a card. Hold on a second. And the card is from Chris. Can't wait until you are up and kicking again. You guys, that is so sweet. Christine, I'm going to be, I'm going to look into this book tonight. And Rachel, thank you so much. And everybody that sent me everything. Melissa, that was so sweet. You guys didn't have to do that. Um, I really, really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Um, God, it's like, what is it, honey? Do you want to come say hi to everybody? Come here. Well, come here. We'll say hi to everybody. They are wanting such attention tonight, aren't you? You want to say goodbye? We're going to say goodbye now. We're going to make this a short vlog. You want to make it a short vlog? He said, I want you to spend the whole night with me, Dad. Okay, so we'll make this a short vlog. Can you say to everybody, look in the camera, Boo Radley. <laughs> Can you say, if you made it this far in the vlog, thank you for watching. We really, really appreciate it. And what else should we say tonight? Um... Please give this video a big thumbs up, this vlog, if you really liked it. And make sure that you're still subscribed to my channel. And leave a comment in the comment section below. And leave a boat for the love boat. <laughs> or a heart, or any kind of heart with a boat. What else can we think? And I hope you guys are having an amazing... It's really hard for me to stand. I'm, hold on a second. I'm going to go over here. We're going to go over here. He's got... Look, he's got his hand in my pocket. <laughs> We haven't sat on this couch and recorded in a long time, have we, Boo Radley? And there's Tucker, too. And we hope you guys are having an amazing Friday. Um, unless you have other plans. But like we always say, don't have other plans. <laughs> do something fun today. Do something exciting. Um, yeah, hang out with your pups if you can. And um, do something that... Well, he smells so pup... Like, these dogs smell like puppies all the time. It's so funny. You know, like how you... Like when you first get a puppy. Um... He said, don't even worry about it. I'm my own person. You're your own person. He said, yeah, I'm my own person. Where are you going? He said, I'm going to Hawaii. I'm done with this place. You're going to Hawaii? Where are you going to, what are you going to do there? He goes, oh, I'm going to stay at a tree house. Don't even worry about it. A tree house? Yeah, I'm going to stay in a tree house. I'm going to do some scuba diving. You are? I must see sharks. Sharks be rather, I'm terrified of sharks. Oh, no, not me. I lasso them and I ride around. They're the best of my friends. They are? Well, how are you going to get to all these places? Oh, I, I have so much money. <laughs> He's so cute. He's laying. This is how he sleeps on my chest. Boo Radley, how are you going to afford to go on this expensive trip? Oh, don't even worry about it. I got all kinds of gold coins. Gold coins, Boo Radley? Where do you keep them? I keep them in Diagon Alley. Don't even worry about it. He's a liar. Don't listen to him. No, I'm not a liar. <laughs> This drives Alex crazy, by the way. He just, like, he'll act like he's real serious, like, working on something or looking at Instagram. Or what. Look at this over here. What are you doing? What are you doing, huh? <gasps> <laughs> 
Alex will act like he's like doing something real serious, and then I'll start doing this with like Boo and Tucker. What are you doing? Oh, wait, here comes Boo Rab. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the wrestling starts. Boo Rally, did you get him? He said, don't even worry about it. I'm ready to go to the plane. I got my private jet. <laughs> Tucker said, look at Tucker. He said, Tucker, he said, he's a liar. Don't even, don't even listen to him. <laughs> Boo Radley! Oh my lord, Boo Radley. Family friendly. Anyway, um, Boo Radley, no. He doesn't like that, Boo. Stop. Um, you're good boy. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> Look at them. They're like, they're so energetic. This is why when Alex comes home, they're so energetic. Also, do something that will make yourself proud when you look back on it. Um, what else? See, he just wanted to be up there. <laughs> what else, Boo Radley? He said, don't even worry about it, Boot Scoot and Boogie. I'm going to Texas. Houston, Austin, Dallas, I'm coming your way. I'm doing a meet and greet. Get ready. $500, just like James Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Boo Rally, you think you're worth $500? I know I'm worth $500. Don't even worry about it. I can sing better than he can. Anyway, I don't listen to Boo Rally. He's shady. <laughs> He's shady. I'm the nice one. Just listen to me. I'm the sweet one. <laughs> anyway, what else? Let's see. Uh, do something that will make yourself proud when you look back on it. If nobody else has told you this today, I love you. You do? Maybe. I might be lying. He's lying. No, I'm not. I really do love you. I love everybody. I love you. Make sure that you look at yourself in the mirror every single day and you tell yourself, I love you and at least one positive affirmation like, you are beautiful. <laughs> you are beautiful or you are valuable or you are talented. Whatever you need to hear or you are loved, of course. And uh, every day, every day, Every night before you go to bed, say it about the next day. And every day when you get up in the morning, say to yourself, today is going to be an amazing day. I'm going to scuba dive with the sharks. I'm going to have an amazing day all day long. Oh, my Lord. Are we wrestling? No more wrestling. No more wrestling. No more wrestling. I'm going to have an amazing day all day long. I'm going to sing. I'm going to dance. I'm going to laugh. I'm going to cry if I need to or if I want to. I'm going to spend some time alone if I want to. Or I can spend time with my family and friends. And, um, yeah, just relax. And if I have to work, I'm going to do so with a smile on my face. And I'm going to have my dog give me kisses on my arm. <laughs> And um, if I have to work, I'm going to do so with a smile on my face. And I'm going to be a positive contribution to the world. And um, what else do we say? I'm going to have positive, I'm going to have a good, I'm going to have great uh, opportunities come my way all day long and positive experiences all day long. And if my day gets off track and I start to get, get a little negative, Nancy, well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do, Boo Radley? We're going to kick. Because <laughs> we're 50 and we like to kick, said Tucker. Good boy. Who's a good? See if I start to scratch. Watch. Is that not so cute? Watch. I'll do it again. He does it all day long. <laughs> you want some more? You want some more? One more. <laughs> so cute, isn't it? Okay. And um, if if I become a negative Nancy and my day starts going a little bit negative, well, I can start my day over whenever I want. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that, Tuki Tuki. Just like that, Tuki Tuki. Boo Radley. Tuki Tuki. And if you want more rubs from somebody, just ask for them. Now he won't do it. And if you want more rubs from somebody, and you want somebody to be nice to you, and you want somebody to be sweet to you, well, <laughs> he's doing this, see? <laughs> that means rub, me, rub my head, Dad. <laughs> Anyway, uh, most importantly, make sure that you reach out to somebody and you let them know how much you care about them and that they mean something to you. This guy is so sweet, isn't he? Look at this one. I love you. You mean a lot to me. I do? Of course you're my dad. Just reach out to somebody, your dad or your mom or your grandparents or a neighbor or whoever and just let them know how much they mean to you. Even just put a little post-it note on your supervisor's uh, desk and say, thank you for the opportunity to have a job. I appreciate it. Sometimes we don't even think about those things, right? Um, and what else, boys? Oh, thank you, Boo Radley. Always practice random acts of kindness. 
Also, like I always say, practice random acts of kindness. But I also say, what, Boo Radley? Boo. What? Eat it. What? <gasps> but don't tell anyone. Just do it because it's the nice thing to do. It's the right thing to do. And we want to put goodness and kindness and love out there into the world. And I think that's it. Anything else you want to say? This is what he does all day long. He licks Tucker's back. Isn't that the sweetest thing? Our vet told us that that's their way to like, he stopped. That's their way to like show each other compassion. They love each other. They do that all day long. If they're not doing that, they're wrestling, aren't you? He said, yes, I like to wrestle. I like to have fun and wrestle. Guess what? Daddy's coming home. You want to see your daddy? <gasps> Daddy's going to be home in just a little bit. <laughs> they think he's home already. Boo Radley's like, I ain't falling for it. When's your dad going to come home? <gasps> All right, I'm going to get off here. I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.